Look at this, here we have a Volkswagen Beetle. Everybody knows about the Volkswagen Beetle. You may even think it's the most produced vehicle ever, but it's actually the All right, I think I got cut off there. It's actually the Chevy Suburban, but the Volkswagen Beetle is much more popular. It's a lot cooler of a car. So let's get into the top five problems. To repair all the problems we're gonna be talking about today, you can actually get all these parts at 1AAuto.com. Now let's start with number one, the mass airflow sensor. What the mass airflow sensor does, it actually monitors the airflow going into the engine. That way the computer can compensate for how much fuel to add or subtract. In the event the mass airflow sensor goes bad, that can affect your fuel mileage. Some of the symptoms you're going to find with a faulty mass airflow sensor is a check engine light with a mass airflow sensor code. You may have some drivability issues where the engine runs a little rough. There may be even a lack of power. And then again, fuel mileage. One of the ways you can prevent this item from failing is making sure you change your air filter. If dirt gets in there or past the air filter, it's going to clog up that mass airflow sensor and cause issues. To replace it, it's very easy. There's a connector right here. You just disconnect that connector and there's two screws holding it in and you can slide it right out, slide the new one in. But you can also buy it with the housing and it's just as easy. Disconnect the connector, take this hose off, take a couple screws out, slides out, put the new one in, you'll be good to go. Moving on to the next problem, number two, the coolant temperature sensor, which is located right here. Some of the symptoms you're going to find with this is a warning on the dash. You may have a check engine light with a coolant temp related code, and it's also going to give you a drivability issue. So you may have trouble starting in the morning because the computer doesn't know the actual temperature of the engine, and that's going to affect the f air fuel ratio. While we're talking about this coolant temp sensor, Check out this housing as well. You may have a coolant leak coming from this area and the housings leak, whether it's the gasket or the housings crack, but that's a pretty common thing if you notice that you have a coolant leak, so check those out. Continuing with coolant, let's talk about the coolant reservoir. Number three, it's located right here. The coolant reservoir is where you're gonna add your coolant, but it's also where you're gonna check the level. You don't want to open this cap while the engine is hot. Make sure the engine is cool. Otherwise, you're going to have coolant coming out and it's going to be extremely hot. So you can take the cap off. Some of the symptoms you're going to find with a bad coolant reservoir is it's leaking. There could be cracks in it. But also, there is a coolant level switch right here or a coolant level sensor that sometimes that goes bad. And this is fairly easy to change. You can use a fluid extraction pump, take the fluid out, take the hoses off. There's a couple of screws, take those off, and it comes right out. Put the new one in, fill it up, and you're good to go. That's everything under the hood. Let's go on to the windows. Oh. <laughs> All right, maybe we're not done under the hood. Let's talk about the hood latch. You may find that your hood latch is not keeping the hood closed all the time, or you go to release the hood and it's not popping up. A lot of times that's the hood latch binding. And if you use a little bit of silicone spray on the hood latch once in a while, that should prevent any of that binding, but it still may happen and it's fairly easy to replace. There's a couple of screws on the back side. You take those out, disconnect the cable, pull that out, put a new hood latch in and you'll be all set. Now on to the last problem, the window regulator. You may notice that the window is not working, whether it's stuck up or stuck down, or it may even be binding up common thread is the window regulator itself. To replace the window regulator, you're going to have to take the inside door panel off. And then there is another internal panel that is attached to the regulator and then the regulator attached to the window. So you have to separate the window, take that other panel off, and then you can access the window regulator itself. If you're trying to determine whether you have a bad window regulator or a window switch, one of the things you can do is manipulate the switch if you hear the motor moving inside, then it's probably not the switch. It's probably the regulator itself binding up. So that's one way you can tell. But you could always have a switch problem as well. There's our top five problems on the most famous vehicle of all time. Even if it hasn't been produced the longest, everybody knows about it. If you need parts for your vehicle, make sure you click the link in the description, head over to 1AAuto.com, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to our channel, ring the bell, turn on all notifications so don't miss any of our videos.
Oh, I think I got cut off there. It's actually the Chevy Suburban. And if you need parts for your, <laughs> that feels weird. That's everything under the hood. Let's, that's everything under the hood. So that's it for our top five problems for this most famous vehicle of all time. Even though 